No. And that's where the film came in. Yeah. So, uh, so how did that come about? So, did you guys hear about it and try to get in? Uh, the name of the film that we're talking about, by the way, is "We Always Lie to Strangers." We always lie to strangers, <laughs> um, which is very an odd title. I thought. Do I, you think? I thought so. Thought about it. Yeah. Well, um, I'll say. I like the title because I live here and stuff. So <laughs> I know. get it. Yeah. You get it. But I thought uh, that it was a weird title when I first heard about it because mm-hmm. I was working with Chip right. uh, Holderman that's mm-hmm. in that at that time. And when they told me the title, I thought, well, this is going to be perceived odd to the public. And it is mm-hmm. perceived odd until you see it and yeah. then you get it. Yeah. And, and those of us that live here get it. Right away. Yeah. And it's on Netflix now, right? It is. Yeah. So you can go on Netflix and watch this, but it follows, uh, I think, four... Four different Four different stories. Mm -hmm. Or stories. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You guys, the Presleys, Chip. And Lennons. And the Lennons, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, So it follows uh, over a couple years, isn't it? They filmed it over a couple years. You know, they originally came to us when we were at the White House and everything was going strong. They were looking at different things, different options to do Mm -hmm. their documentary on Branson. And I didn't have a choice. Yeah. It wasn't by me. They said, oh, this is what the owner wants to do. I think we should have them follow you around. And they were nice guys. Yeah. But you're being filmed all the time, good or bad. You are. Mm -hmm. And in the back of your brain, you're like, how are they going to portray me? I don't know if I want to do this, you know. And I kind of just went with it. And they didn't, then they didn't come back. And I was like, okay, good. That's over. Yeah, right. Yeah. Then we took over. Yeah. And then they showed and up again. And then they again. wanted to get the whole mm-hmm. story. Mm-hmm. And like I said, really nice guys. But every time I saw my phone that they were calling, I had a sinking feeling. Yeah. And it was like, I just, I don't want them following me. That wasn't the best time of my life. No. They found out how I dealt with everything from cleaning bathrooms. Yeah, I know. You talk about that. To people not show. paying you the money that they owe you. Mm-hmm. And you trying to get cast. some of the entertainers to mm-hmm. go out and promote. Yeah, I and, just and watched it. So. Yeah, so you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, you know, and, and my child is, what, three years old at the time or four? And and she's almost following. five foot at that she's time. She's five foot at that time strange. as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Awkward. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it it was a difficult time um, after I saw the movie. Actually, when they called and said, hey, we're going to do a screening for it. You want to come over? Uh-huh. I initially Scared wanted to go, no, All I right. don't. I don't want to see it. I don't want to have anything to do with it. And I thought, well, I better get used to it because it's going out there. Yeah. So. Yeah. You better be prepared. But yeah. Mm-hmm. So they, they did a good job. They you were really happy with did. it? I wasn't happy with what was going on in my life, but the way they did it, I was fine. Was fair? Yeah. Fair, fair was, enough. Yeah. Yeah. I've done uh, three reality shows mm-hmm. now. Uh, which this is different. I mean, yours is a movie right. uh, that came out. So reality shows, you know, they want to sensationalize things. Mm-hmm. Luckily, I had very minor parts uh-huh. on these, very. Uh, but the the entire time, I'm asked to perform different things. And I kept mm-hmm. thinking, are they going to pr- portray me as a good performer? Right. Or they can make it look like things Absolutely. didn't Absolutely. They so could well. do anything you, they wanted you to do. You have no control. No control. Mm-mm. None. And they don't tell you. And it can honestly depend on the other things they film. Mm-hmm. If they have a success story here, well, they need a non-successful Correct. story. We were definitely the underdogs in this movie. Yeah, you guys come across really well in it. Well, I good. Think. Thank you. I think so Thank you. Uh, yeah. because it shows what it's like. It definitely and the struggles, shows. and it makes people. <laughs> yeah, it does. It, it makes people appreciate mm-hmm. uh, the hard work and stuff that it you does. have to go through to have a show. Mm. Because I like me. I mean, I've been here nine years. You've been here uh, slightly longer. Yes. And uh, Since I was two. we both see people come in that could be a big name and they think they're going to just clean up. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. I'm going to be the new thing in Branson. And I was told years ago that you have to plan on five years before you mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. before you have success. At because least. the first year, nobody knows you. Right. Because the we we, we rely a lot on coaches, mm-hmm. uh, the coaches, meaning like travel groups that come right. to Branson. And so they plan at least a year out. At least. Yeah, mm-hmm. usually like two years. So you spend a year establishing yourself. The next year you get a little following. Mm-hmm. You try to get the coaches and people to see your show. Right. Third year they might think about booking it like the fourth year. Right. And That's in the exactly. meantime, you're trying to buy advertising. Mm-hmm. Which is not cheap here. Mm-mm. It's insane. And that's where we had struggled a lot. Yeah. And you know, certain... having somebody that supplied all that. Right. And you had a thousand people. You know, when we started Magnificent Seven there was 30 shows in town right now there's like 100 now 130 something. yeah you know mm-hmm. and we are fu- we were full every night if we didn't have a full house or close to it at 1200 seats mm-hmm. wow 
what's wrong. It's a big theater. It is. It was a very big theater. And he made it a dinner theater, which made it even better. Yeah. You know? And then when we stepped out of that, we didn't have that. Right. We didn't have the market. I didn't have the money. You know, we had to take the loan out that we'll be paying on for the rest of our lives. Yeah. You didn't have that foundation for that. But we had the love for it. Mm Mm-hmm. And that's the hard part. That's all you need. I know. Someone said you that. as an entertainer. Well, yeah. yeah. Someone said that. Yeah. Well, Can't that put my finger and cash. On it, but you yes. need cash. Too. Cash would work. Yeah. Yes. Um, no, I. And the challenge with being in that theater, mm-hmm. uh, I would assume, because my I had a friend Darren Romeo, that was here in town at the Welk Theater, which right? seats two thousand. It's a lot. Say. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's more, but he could have. 300 people. Mm-hmm. But you went in, in in a room that seats 2,000 or 1,200. Right. It looks really small. Empty. So then people go online with the trip advisors uh-huh. and with the Yelp mm-hmm. and all this. And they write, the theater was barely half full. Right. But people would kill for 300 people. A lot exactly. of the shows would love to have 300 Three, people. It would be great. Mm-hmm. Now. Now. <laughs> well, no, even then. Even I mean, then. Yeah, I agree. Know, I agree. Our theater seats uh, 700 and something. Mm-hmm. And... <clears throat> Some days we go out and there's 400 people, right. and it looks uh, it looks light, mm-hmm. let's say. But 400 people at every show. Mm-hmm. A lot of these smaller shows would love to have. I would love that as well. 400 yes. people, but so that's kind of a that. problem with uh, in Branson here. We have this disparity. We have really small theaters, mm-hmm. and then those people brag about we're always sold out, right? You know, and then you have the theater like uh, what's the Grand Palace, mm-hmm. which is slightly too big for the shows we have and slightly too small right. for the big names that right. want to come in. Right. But you still get these people that come in and they think I'm going to come into a year in Branson and be. A, I mean, we've had people. Um, I wasn't here, but I heard like Willie Nelson mm-hmm. came in and uh, Wayne Newton. Sure, I was here during that whole time. Were you? Mm-hmm. And. Those are big names. Like you would think that's going to be packed Mandrell, all the time. Barbara Mandrell, Louise Mandrell. You know, mm-hmm. they had the Grand Palace. Oh, yeah. So they were huge. That. You yeah. know, and I would look forward to the people they brought in every week. Kenny Rogers would come in. Yeah. You know, Paul Anka, if you remember Paul Anka. I do. Yes. Yeah. Captain and Tennille. I mean, you know, that was that was the heyday. Uh huh. You know, mm-hmm. I would look forward to those. And but none of them are here now. They aren't. The but one that stuck around, Andy. Yeah, Andy, Andy Williams. Mm-hmm. You know, he stuck it out. He he was committed to making it right. work, and he did. And he, he kind of right. brought Christmas to Branson. I'm told. 